Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this video, we are going to dive deep in single child scroll view widget. We are going to cover everything you need to know about this widget, including its real time use, properties, and how to use it in your Flutter application. So, without wasting time, let's get started. First off, let's take a look at what the single child scroll view widget is and what it does. The single child scroll view widget is a single child scrolling container that allows us to scroll to the content that is too large to fit on the screen. It is especially used for displaying long block of text, images or other widget that take up lot of vertical space. You might have a question, all scrolling related problems can easily be solved by using list view. Then why to use single child scroll view? When we intend to show long list of items in a scrollable way, Flutter suggests use of list view. But when we need scrollable behavior only to fit the UI perfectly in different sizes or for device rotation, then use the single child scroll view. Moreover, to display keyboards for text inputs, scrollable alerts, and all such a small scrolling components like uh, forms, user profile, setting options are suggested to be placed inside the single child scroll view. Now let's see how to use single child scroll view in our code. Single child scroll view has got property called child which is used to place content inside the single child scroll view. As it takes only one widget, we usually make a column as a child and place the UI element as a children for this column. So for the single child scroll view, let me use a column as a child and let's pass some containers inside that column. Now you can see here, I have got a column as a child for the single child scroll view that contains different container with different colors and I can simply scroll through my single child scroll view. Let's see the real time use of single child scroll view with two different examples. Let's start from the first example which is based on the screen size issue and screen rotation problem. Many times we create a UI that fit for specific screen size and we feel happy for that. For example, you can see here, I simply have a column as a body and this column contains three different containers. On my full screen, that is for my specific device size, this UI is looking perfectly fine. But if I just simply decrease the size of my screen, you can see Flutter will give me over further. But right now, I don't have any different phone with me. So that uh, I can't, it means I can't explain how uh, I can just uh, minimize the screen size. But what I can uh, show you, I can show you a trick here. Just okay, let me just go inside the setting. And here we have option called display. From this display, uh, simply let me just increase the uh, uh, font display size. Okay, it's not a font size, it's actually a display size. So let me just increase uh, the uh, display size here. And you can see here, uh, when I come back to my Flutter application, you will see that uh, Flutter has given me error. Obviously, it is the bottom overflow. And if I go back in the setting, okay, let me go back in the setting. And uh, let me just make it uh, say small, okay, which I usually use here. And when I go back in Flutter application, you can see now it is uh, quite fine. Okay, this is the first problem here. Now the second problem is if I rotate my phone, okay, let me rotate my phone here. You can see here as I have rotated my phone, you can see here there is a problem. So in order to solve this problem, uh, we can simply make uh, the use of uh, the single child scroll view. So what I can do here, simply we have to wrap this column inside the uh, widget and just uh, we have to name this widget as single child scroll view, obviously. So let's uh, format the code and save here. You can see now. Uh, if I just now just change the font size, okay, not the font size, the display size, okay, let's just increase the display size a little bit. And if I go back here, you can see there is no problem here. In fact, Flutter is giving me an option for scrolling because it's a single child scroll view, it's not just a column here. And now let me rotate my phone. And what you'll observe here again, I don't have that uh, overflow problem here, okay, I can simply scroll here, okay. This is what the beauty of a single child scroll view. Let's see another example uh, that is to solve overflow error in case of form when a keyboard appears in the form. You can see here I have this simple form made by using a column by placing different text fields inside it. So for this a specific device screen it is looking perfectly fine but when I try to enter some data for example let's say when I just click a mouse here and when I try to just type something you can see here this keyboard has appeared and as this keyboard can't fit in my device screen size it is giving me the bottom overflow error. Now in order to solve this problem, we can simply again make the use of single child scroll view, again wrap this column inside a widget and we have to name this widget obviously as the single child scroll view and when I save it, you can see immediately this problem got solved and you can see now I can simply scroll inside this form. So this is again uh, one more important or you can say one, most, uh, one of the most uh, essential use of a single child scroll view. 
let's understand some of the important properties of single child scroll view okay we have got property called scroll direction basically scroll direction lets you to control direction in which single child scroll view can be scrolled the default value for this is axis dot vertical and that is the reason when we create the single child scroll view we get this vertical scrolling so we can change this vertical to horizontal for this simply we have to use another value called axis dot horizontal and in order to make it properly useful what i need to do i need to change this column to say row and what i have to do i have to change, simply change the values of this width and height so let me just interchange the values of width and height here after modifying my code you can see here I got a row uh, that is placed inside the single chest scroll view and that got a different container and now as we have the scroll direction as axis dot horizontal I can simply scroll in the horizontal direction inside the single child scroll view. We have got a reverse property. The scroll direction can be reversed by making the value of reverse to say true. By default its value is false. So what do you mean by false? When we have a false so we can scroll in the direction of say top to bottom but when it changes to say a true so first of all let me explain what will happen when we have a false here. The observable thing is inside this column we have got a, a first container which is having a green color and last container is having the cyan color. So uh, let me reload my application here again. You will observe now green box is the box which is at the top and the sign box means in order to get the science box uh, I have to scroll here okay so let me make this say reverse say true so what will happen here it is going to reverse my list and that is the reason instead of appearing the first box okay what will happen here it has uh, just scrolled automatically and the last box is now currently visible at the bottom so in order to get the box or the contain at the top what I have to do I simply have to scroll and that type of scrolling is called bottom to top scrolling and for the uh, in case of horizontal it turns out to be right to left using padding we can maintain the consistency with ui so that we can adjust the padding of your entire single child scroll view so in this case simply let me use here say agencies dot all and let me apply say 32 pixel padding across all my entire single child scroll view so if i scroll you can see it is having the padding of 32 pixel for all the four edges Features property determines the bouncing effect to be shown when end of the single child scroll view is reached. Okay, so for example, let me use here say physics as say clamping uh, scroll physics. So what will happen here if I use uh, clamping scroll physics? Let me write here say const and let me save the code. We can observe now uh, when my just uh, scroll uh, means uh, when my list ends, we can observe here there is some scrolling effect at the top happening. And when my single child scroll view ends, and if I just uh, drag here, you can see there is some type of scrolling effect here. So this is called a scroll physics. So inside the, instead of this say clamping scroll physics, I can change it to say a bouncing scroll physics. So it will look like a bouncing here. For example, you can observe now if I just scroll, it is looking like a bouncing. And at the top here, if my scroll, if my if my lift ends here, if I again scroll, you can see here it's looking like a bouncing. And there is again property called say never uh, scroll physics. So it's not a property; it's a value. Say never scrollable uh, scroll physics. So if I use here, so it will completely uh, disable the scrolling, and that is the reason we can't scroll our single child scroll view. We have a very important property called controller that allows us to control the single child scroll view programmatically uh, but as it requires a, a much more explanation and that is the reason I will create a dedicated video for this controller uh, in our upcoming sessions. We have got a property called keyboard dismiss behavior. This property is mostly used when a single child scroll view got some text field and when a keyboard form appears for that one. So we can observe here I have simply changed my UI and we have got this uh, text field inside the column and this column is placed inside the single child scroll view obviously. Default value for this uh, keyboard dismiss behavior is scroll view keyboard dismiss behavior dot manual. It means you have to manually dismiss the keyboard. For example, you can see here keyboard is there and if I just drag here, you can observe now keyboard is not getting uh, dismissed. So what I need to do, I need to just click the back button and then and only this keyboard is going to got uh, dismissed. But if you want this keyboard to get uh, dismissed automatically when we drag, so simply what we have to do, we have to change this value to say scroll view keyboard dismiss behavior dot say on drag. So as soon as we drag automatically the keyboard will disappear. You can see here when I just click here and when I just drag in my scroll view means inside my single cell scroll view you can see keyboard got dismissed. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really found this video helpful and knowledgeable then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.